Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Improvement Series, where I'm going to be learning a new character from scratch in Smash Ultimate in order to teach you the ways that I think about improving at Smash and the methods that I use to get better. Today we're going to be talking about learning matchups. Today's chapters, why you should learn matchups, start with the basics, learn the details, and finally, forget the basics. Timestamps are all in the video description. Alright, let's jump in. So why should you learn matchups? I, I think it, there's a really obvious answer to this question, and that's just this, right? There's so many characters in Smash Ultimate that if, if you don't know like a handful of matchups, it's possible that you just show up to a tournament and you owe two because you've never played those matchups before. And just because there's so many characters, there's just so many varieties of the matchups that you have to learn that in order to just be a well-rounded, consistent player, I think it's really important to have like a at least a general understanding of how to play most of the characters. I kind of talked about this in uh, my video a couple weeks back about how to learn from watching your VODs, where I kind of talked about this concept that, that some characters, they cheat in Smash, right? And what I meant by this was that there's like a general way that you can approach very similar matchups. So like the way that you fight Roy, Krom, Lucina, Marth, it's all probably fairly similar for most characters in the game. Like the sword characters, you kind of play them all the same. Uh, other characters, like heavyweights, they can kind of play the same. You kind of have the same game plan. But there's always a few characters that kind of play outside the rules of the game. And you kind of have to approach these matchups differently. And if you come into these matchups without knowledge on how to fight them, they're just going to completely blow you out of the water and you're just going to get destroyed without any chance of winning. So if you want to be a consistent tournament player, you have to know what you're doing in these matchups and you have to have a solid game plan coming in if you want a good chance at winning. So today we're going to talk about like how you should learn matchups. Now, obviously, I'm not, like, the greatest player in the world. I was never the greatest player in the world. So I'm just going to... So I can't say that, like, this is the, the best definitive way to learn matchups, right? But I can just show you that this is my method, and this is what worked for me. And I think I did have a solid grasp of how to play certain matchups throughout my time as a competitor in Smash. So I'll just kind of go into details of what I think and talk about why I think that this is the case. So how to learn matchups. I think there's like three really good ways that, that you can go about starting to learn the matchup. And number one being just like watching players that are better than you at the matchup. This was kind of my always a, like first step to learning a matchup. If I didn't know anything that I was doing, the first thing I would do is think, okay, who's a better player than me? And I'm a Diddy player, so I would go, okay, Zenodo. I would go on YouTube and I would just search like Zenodo, Diddy, and then the, the character of the matchup I'm trying to play. And then you just watch, well, what does Zenodo do better than me in the matchup? What, how does he play? And I, I would kind of just like take notes as I watch. It just, you just get a good idea of what you're supposed to be doing by watching someone better than you that's winning at the matchup. Uh, the other thing that I think is really important too is to watch yourself in the matchup. Now, obviously, if you don't know the matchup, you're not learning like from yourself playing. But what you are learning is where your deficiencies in the matchup are. So you're kind of seeing like what things are hitting you all the time, where you're taking the most damage, how are you dying, like and you could kind of see what areas you need to improve in just by watching yourself. And finally, what I would probably consider to be the most important thing to do is talk to others, share knowledge, and ask questions. Now the, the Smash Discord servers are one of the best places to do this. But even outside of that, I think it's really good to just make friends of the same character as you. So you can kind of bounce ideas back and forth between each other. You can go ask questions and kind of level up together in that way. Uh, personally, in Smash 4, I'm just going to use Zenodo as a lot uh, as an example because he helped me with a lot of matchups and kind of gave me the framework that I use today on learning matchups. But if I didn't know a matchup, one of the steps I would always do is I would just... Ask Zenodo, okay, what what do you do in this matchup? How do you play this matchup? And it, just by talking to someone better, even if he wasn't the best player at the matchup, he'd be able to share some insight that could help me. And even if it's not like a player that's better than you, sometimes players that are worse than you might be better at one specific matchup. So if you know somebody has a training partner that like they play against all the time, 
you can probably bet that they're really well versed in the matchup and they might know more about that matchup than somebody who's a way better player so always keep that in mind and just talk to a lot of different people and just try to get a lot of different opinions and you can definitely learn a lot just from getting a wide range of people to talk to now when, when you're learning the matchup I always say start with the basics, right? Because when you're first learning a matchup, starting with the absolute basics is gonna be the most beneficial. So you could spend like three hours learning frame data, right? But why would you do that if you you don't even understand like what, what the character that you're fighting against wants to do? You don't understand their game plan. But, oh, you know that they have like 10 active frames on their like down air. All right, that's, that doesn't help you that much. So don't waste your time memorizing this, these number of active frames for every move before you learn how to exploit the other character's weaknesses. Just like knowing what the other character is good at and bad at is a much better start and will get you much better results faster. Once you're more well versed in the matchup, then sure, yeah, you can go back and learn the frame data and get more into the details. But when you're just starting out, just focus on like the big key things and you're going to get a lot more mileage out of it. So what are the basics? Uh, so obviously like the basic game plan at all percents so like when you're at low percent mid percent and kill percent So what I mean by this is that like every character in the game when you're at zero percent They're gonna be looking for the move that starts a combo So I think you should learn like what are their combo starters if you know they combo off of grab When you're at zero percent you can bet they're probably gonna be fishing for grabs Do they combo off of down tilt then maybe they're gonna be fishing for down tilts so just knowing how they start their combos will give you a good idea of where you should be like looking to like, okay, he's looking for this move. I can space myself accordingly. I can stay back out of range and be ready to punish it. And the same goes to when you're at kill percents. Do they kill with just like random forward smash? They're probably going to be throwing out forward smash. Do they have a kill throw? They're probably going to be looking for grabs at higher percents. So just knowing what the opponent is looking for at what percents is going to help you a lot. In the, when you're in the early stages of learning a matchup. The other thing that's really important is going to be like the general strengths and weaknesses of the character. So like are they they really good at fighting up close? Are they really good at fighting from a distance? Uh, do they get gimped easily? Maybe you can may focus on getting them off stage more. Maybe they don't have good landing options and their airspeed is bad so you should focus on putting them into the air and juggling them. Knowing what they're good and bad at will help you exploit their weaknesses and avoid getting hit by the things that are strong about them. Also know like the general escape options and this kind of goes both ways. So like what moves do you have that can get you out of their combos? What moves do they have that get out of your combos? A lot of characters have like a random frame one options that you have to be aware of. So if you go for a combo that's not quite true, maybe they can escape. And you should also know, well, maybe they have this combo, but if it's not true, you can get out by doing like XYZ move, right? Also know about like the gimmicks. A lot of characters just have weird mechanics that if you don't know the mechanics, they're going to just abuse it and beat you really bad. So like if you don't know what Steve is doing when he's mining and how he gets like the different like what do you call it gems or different materials that's the word yeah so if you don't know how that stuff works then you're going to be at a big disadvantage if you don't know how like the random comeback mechanics work for like every character in the game because there's a lot uh you're going to be at a disadvantage there so just learn the mechanics of all the gimmicks and it'll help you a lot and also knowing what you can and can't punish so many characters have a setup where they'll just like hit your shield with something safe and then just like throw out a strong move and a lot of people that don't know that 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 move on your shield was safe they'll they see oh my shield got hit i can shield grab or i can punish and they try to punish and then they just die so just know what you can and can't punish and what you can punish with after you get this like general understanding of everything now you can go into learning the details uh each matchup has so much info to learn that I, I uh, recommend like keeping a notebook to like keep all your knowledge uh, just organized. I talk about it a lot, but I'm just going to give a shout out to Notion. Uh, I have this uh, template is going to be in the description below so you can download this for yourself. It lets you organize all your notes into different like matchups. So here I have a list of every character in the game. 
you could set like the matchup ratio that you want to set so you can filter by what characters you have advantage and disadvantage against uh you can filter by their weights you can even put like what stages to ban and counter pick and you can add any other kind of properties that you want to to the table and then you can open up each individual thing to like a specific note page so it's really useful this is what i personally use and i recommend it it just helps you keep really organized when you're learning the details because there is so much to learn write everything down in as much detail as you can and it will help you in the long run so i i just want to show you really quick uh this is a a, a matchup guide that i wrote in smash 4 for diddy versus luigi I'm just using this as an example because it's easily accessible and I have it online so anyone can go read this. I will leave a link in the description below again. This is a guide that I wrote for how to play the matchup correctly as Diddy against Luigi. And I'm just using this to show you like this is the kind of detail that I go into when I'm making a matchup guide. This is what you should do if you want to get really good at a specific matchup because the more that you can write about it, the better you will be at playing it. You want to get everything specific. So I talk about every little specific aspect of playing the neutral game, every specific aspect of the advantage state, how to combo, how to juggle, how to edge guard, ledge trapping, what to do against every ledge get up option in the game, how to get out of his grab combos, how to recover properly against him, how to not die, stages to ban, common mistakes. All this stuff is really important to know when you're learning a matchup. So keeping it in as much detail as you can will really help you. So there's kind of this this uh, technique uh, called the Feynman technique, where you uh, basically the idea is that you first write down everything you know about the topic you want to learn, then you try to explain it to a five year old. And if you can't explain it to a five year old, then that kind of shows that there's like a gap in your understanding. So then you know to like research those things, and then after you can explain that to a five-year-old, that probably means you're better at knowing it than you were before. A lot of times people think they know something, and then like someone asks them a question, and they're like, oh, well, uh, I, uh, well, it's like, uh, you know, and they kind of stumble. So they, it shows they don't really know what they, they thought they know. But if you use this technique, and you prove that you can explain it to a five-year-old, then that means you're really knowledgeable at it. So how this is applying to Smash, I'm changing it to the... Elin method, we're going to call it. So this is kind of a play on like Eli5, if you've heard that, explain like I'm five. But I'm changing it to Elin for explain like I'm a noob. If you can explain it to a noob that is always asking stupid questions, that probably proves that you understand it well. So like noobs all the time, they'll, they'll ask you like, okay, well, what do you do in this situation? Oh, well, you, you, you use this move. Well, why do you use that move? Is it because the other character has like some option that they like to use all the time and that's how you counter it? It's just like this. If you can explain to the noob everything about it, that means you have a much better understanding of it. Once you get this like gigantic, like long written out matchup guide, now it's time to put it into practice. It doesn't matter if you have all the knowledge in the world on the matchup, if it's not in your muscle memory. Now, once you learn that whole gigantic matchup, it's going to take a long time to like actually become proficient at executing on all those strategies that you that you worked on. But playing the matchup and practicing it, the things in your notes, it, it will lead to eventually, it'll just naturally become a part of your game, and you won't even really have to think about those notes anymore, and you won't have to like memorize gigantic paragraphs. Which actually leads me into my, my final point, which I'm going to introduce with a quote from uh, jazz saxophonist Charlie Parker. Uh, he's talking about just like playing jazz music, but this applies a lot to Smash in my opinion. So here's what he says. You've got to learn the instrument. Then you practice, practice, practice. And then when you finally get up there on the bandstand, forget all that and just wail. Now why I bring this in is because you wrote this gigantic guide on how to play that matchup properly. But once you're up on stage, you are never going to remember all that, right? There's too much things to remember while you're playing. So once you're up on stage playing that high pressure match, you want to just forget everything and just rely on your muscle memory. So forget the details. Going back to Zenodo again, shout outs to Zenodo, by the way. He was like the best teacher in Smash for me ever. Uh, but he gave me one of the best advice that I ever got in Smash when I asked him for a matchup tip once. And he pretty much explained that like when you're in a tournament match, you're never going to remember all the details, 
So you should just focus on like the core most important things. So he said you just try to summarize the matchup in just a couple sentences and then use those sentences when you're going into the match. So if, if I see I'm in bracket up against like a Bowser player, I can open up my Notion notebook, go to Bowser and read my quick like two sentence summary that will remind me of what to do and I'll be refreshed on like everything. Going up and reading my whole like guide and then going into that match, it's not really going to help me, right? It's too much to remember. But this summary is the most important aspects of the matchup. And also importantly, the act of deciding what these most important things are and writing it down into the most concise description of the matchup that you can, this is going to solidify your knowledge and just keep it in your subconscious so that you don't have to even think about it anymore and that you'll just be naturally good at the matchup that way. So I know this is kind of a lot to take in on my method, but I'm just going to go for next time. I'm just going to show you this process in detail by actually learning a matchup with Pyramithra. So I, I'm not sure which matchup I'm going to choose yet, but probably something that's really common to run into on For Glory, just because it makes it easier to actually play the matchup. <laughs> but I'll, I'll just go from the absolute beginning, where I'm just going to start my matchup guide completely fresh. I'm going to start writing out the things that I know, the questions I have. Then I'm going to watch other Pyramithra players. I'm going to talk to other people. And then I'm going to slowly turn it into like this big matchup guide and I'll share this matchup guide with you guys and I'm going to show like the whole process in the video form of me actually doing that. So yeah, I, uh, besides that, I don't have really a weekly update on where my progress is because I'm kind of just sticking to the same thing, still just slowly learning these matchups and uh, there hasn't been any tournaments recently so I don't have any tournament results to go over exactly. But yeah, that's that's just my general plan. We're going to learn some more matchups, and I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a closer look next time on applying these methods that I talked about today. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you would like the content, please give me a like, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I will see you guys next time where we learn the matchup. Peace.